Hello everyone, I'm your host as always, Mr. Lindley. Our top story, data analysis through a process known as linearization. Now when I type linearization into computer software, I get the red squiggles underneath it, leading me to believe it's fake, just like giraffes. For more on this, we head into the classroom to Mr. Lindley. Hey, Fizz Kids, another day, another video. Today, we're here to talk about linearization. What even is it? Is it a nation of lines? No, it's the best data analysis method. Let's dive in, but first, a word from our sponsors. Calculators, helping people who forget what two plus three is for decades. Calculators. Available in many shapes and sizes to fit all of your needs. Calculators, available in a store near you. Now let's get into linearization and how that's actually different than what's known as curve fitting. Curve fitting, if you don't know, is if you have a line, um, uh, some sort of graph that has some sort of curvy shape, you can fit it with a curve and make a guess. The big difference between these two is that one of us gives us a more definitive way of knowing that we're right. Curve fitting is a very, very broad guess, and it could be correct, but it also could be wildly wrong. Linearization gives us a way to make a guess and then actually check to see whether or not we're right. And that's the thing that we as physics people love about linearization. Let me explain this a little bit more with actually some examples. So first, I'm gonna show you a couple of graphs and I want you to, to look at the differences. So if we look at this graph, Okay, it has sort of a curvy shape. A lot of us typically call this a parabola, maybe even a top opening parabola, parabolic shape. Okay, uh, let's get the next graph in here. Okay, this again has that similar type of curvy type op top opening kind of deal going on here. Uh, and this graph also has a very similar type thing. So if I was looking at these three graphs, I might be very tempted to curve fit these all with a parabolic top opening shape. And believe it or not, if I were to use curve fitting methods, I can get a parabolic shape to fit all of these. The problem with that for us as physics people is that that's wrong for two of the three. So the first graph I showed you actually is a top opening parabola, but the other two are to the power of three and to the power of four. So curve fitting would have told you that, yeah, they, they, they could be parabolas. Linearization would tell us, no, this is not a parabola. That gives us a lot of power to be able to know more definitively the relationships that are present in our data sets. Not for us to sort of guess and be like, well, I don't know. So this is why we really love the process of linearization. Now let's go through some common graph shapes. We can get some terms under our belts. So this first one, this is called a constant graph shape. This is where that, that as the horizontal variable changes over time, there's no variance. I don't see anything changing in the vertical values. This graph is referred to as linear, right? Sometimes also called a direct relationship. Then we have this one, which is known as inverse, right? And um, inverse is very different than the word indirect, right? But this isn't an inverse relationship, very specific, so that, that like curvy shape that way. Then we have our, our top opening parabola, and then finally our side opening parabola. In physics, these are really the five graph shapes that we'll see most commonly. Uh, so those are the ones we really have to be familiar with and, and know. So let's talk about the process of a linearization from sort of a, a global perspective. So let's imagine we have a graph that looks like this, maybe a top opening parabola. Uh, or maybe we have a, a side opening parabola. Or maybe we have whatever that is. The important part here is that we're gonna do some operations on the data set to see what we believe the relationship is. And if we are correct in our guesses based off of shapes, we will get a linear line in the end. Now, if we have a curve, do our process and get a curve, that means we were unsuccessful in our linearizations. But this is the true process of what we're really after. We're taking a data set and making modifications to that data set um, to actually figure out what the relationship is between the two values, because we want to know what the relationship is, not just guess. Now, what are we going to do depending on the different graph shapes that we get? Well, if we have a constant graph shape, we're not going to do anything because that's already a linear relationship. Or some people would even say no relationship, so it's not worth our time. If we have a line, it's already linear! You don't linearize lines. 
Just like you don't freeze ice. Like, it's already there. You know? If we have an inverse relationship, the easiest way to linearize that is actually to invert all of the horizontal data values. That's what we'll do for linearization. Top opening parabola, we're gonna square all the horizontal data values. That's what we'll do to check to see if it actually is that shape. And then side opening parabola, finally, we'll square all the vertical data values. Now, things to watch out for, a couple things to be careful of uh, when we're doing the process of linearization. Some data sets actually require two or more linearizations. Now, for us and our experiences at this AP Physics 1 level, it's one, two linearizations. Right, um, and I will tell you that one is common, two is rare, and three is very, very rare. Uh, but it, it could be possible. So two could happen, one is the most plausible though. Uh, what we're gonna do is, and I'll show you when we do some data sets, we're gonna actually be looking at the R squared value or something known as the correlation of that data set to make the determination as to whether or not we're, we're actually successful. And basically, if we have a graph, we look at the R squared or the correlation. If that R squared increases, then we're doing something right. And if it decreases, that's incorrect. When we modify values, we're also making modifications to the units. So to give an example, if we had time in seconds and we were to square that, we would get time squared in seconds squared. So very, very important things. Uh, so now let's get some practice underway. So let's head over to our data set that we have and actually attempt to practice this a little bit. So what I have here is a data set. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger for us to see, maybe a little bit easier, maybe a little bit larger. Oh, very big. So I have this and let me just expand this. Now this data set, um, you can see that this is actually uh, volume in cubic meters and this is pressure in Pascals. I don't know what that means and that's not totally important. What matters is this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first make my graph like I would um, in, in Google either way. And this is nice. If you see, it just gave me a scatter plot. I didn't even have to deal with anything else. Now by looking at this just by visual inspection, we can see that there's something talking to me somewhere. Just by visual inspection here, this is not a line, but just to check, this is the process we'll go through. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna actually click customize. I'm gonna go to series right here, series. I'm gonna scroll down a bit. I'm gonna click the box next to trend line. And then what I want is I wanna click show R squared. And this R squared value is 0 0.286. An R squared value of one indicates that the data is all perfectly correlated. An R squared of zero indicates what even is this? So you can see this is quite low and you can see that this line actually doesn't match this at all. Now, if we look at this and we go back to our common graph shapes, this looks very, very similar to that inverse graph shape that we saw. And the inverse graph shape, the thing we were told to do is we we're told to actually invert the horizontal data values. And for this, the horizontal data values are actually uh, the V, the volume, capital V. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, set, a second graph, a separate graph, and we're gonna see if we can actually get it to be linear. So let's just make this a little smaller for right now. Okay, now I'm gonna actually take all of the values here, all of the vertical values, and they're gonna remain unchanged, okay? But now the other values, that's what I'm gonna modify. So what I'm actually gonna do is invert, which is one divided by V. And that's gonna be um, one divided by meters cubed. And if you want to be fancy about this, like V to the negative one and then meters to the negative third, that's that's also fine too. And I wanted, if I wanted, I could actually do this all on a calculator and that would be fine. But what's better is uh, this is actually a calculator, so I don't actually need to do that. So if we actually press the equals button, um, the second you press that equals button, it actually turns this into a calculator and I can hit one divided by and actually just click the value there and then I can hit enter. And when it does that, it does the math. Now I could do that again, hit equals and then one divided by, but the easier way to actually do this in Google Sheets is if I actually just hover over this, you can see I get a black cross when I hover over that. If I just click and drag down, it'll repeat that operation over and over again for the remainder of the data set. And just to show you, like if I go one more, uh, it freaks out because there's nothing right here. So I can just sort of delete that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, it's gonna make this next graph. And then as a reminder, if I get something that's linear, 
then that's great. If I get something that's less curvy, that could be good, depends on the R squared value if it got better. If I get something that R squared value is lower, I've done something incorrect. So we're gonna hit insert chart here, and you can see I have this, and now this graph looks fairly linear, right? And I'm gonna make this very big so we can see this nice and easy. But I don't wanna guess on my graph, so I'm gonna go into customize again. I'm gonna click on series here. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna click trend line, scroll down a little bit more, and I'm gonna do two things here. I'm gonna hit show R squared and what? The R squared is one we victory. Weird that a simulated data set would have a perfect correlation. Or is it? It's not, it's not weird. Cause like that's what it should be. Um, so you can see that this is good. And again, R squared increased a lot. Typically we're looking for most data sets to be above 0.98. That would be like a successful linearization. I'm gonna go here and in label, I'm gonna hit use equation for the trend line. And you can see now what that's done right here is it's given me uh, something that I can, can look at. Now it says, four star X plus zero. That is what's officially referred to as the mathematical model for the data set. Now the problem is that's currently in Google language. Um, and I don't know what X is and that four does not have units on it. So it doesn't hold any significance to me yet. So what I want to now do is I want to try to take this and I want to try to go into uh, my mathematical model and my equations of a line and, and really make this something special. Now, a couple notes here. First, you see in Google Sheets right now that there is actually no line right here. That's it's not really a graph yet. So something we typically do is, and you have to do sometimes horizontal axis minimum. Um, if you just type a zero there, um, that'll then give you this axis. So you can see the graph a little bit uh, clearer. Now on your screen, um, you can see it's a little bit better. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hop back over uh, and we're gonna try to write this out in terms of that classic style. Now we have no intercept, so that's pretty easy. It's gonna be zero. From our, 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 our mathematical model there, that's Google telling us that the slope is four. We need to figure out the units um, and then we can go from there. So now what we wanna do is we wanna take that mathematical model that, that Google Sheets gave us and turn it into something that actually has meaning for us instead of this, this Y and X business. This Y equals MS plus, plus B thing is a generic form of a line and it's for all the lines. And honestly, I don't care about every line. I care about my line from my data set. And using things like Y's and X's is very generic. I wanna use specifically what I graphed. Now, what we're gonna do is we know the, the vertical variable and horizontal variables, the slope we had, and we didn't have a vertical intercept, so that's kind of nice. So if we think about this, the first thing we can do is get rid of that vertical intercept since we didn't have it. The Y, remember, is our vertical variable, and that value was capital P, or pressure. Our horizontal variable that we graphed, I don't wanna use the original graph, I wanna use a linearized graph. And this is true if I have nine graphs, three graphs, two graphs, doesn't matter how many times I did linearization, that final line that I have, the final line graph, that's the horizontal variable I wanna be using, which for this was one divided by volume. Now the slope, we know the number is four, but the units on it are very important for us. Numbers get units, that's just the way it works. So if we think about it, it's rise over run, right? Or change in vertical divided by change in horizontal. So how do we get the units? It's gonna be the vertical units divided by the horizontal units, which would lead us with four, pa per one divided by meters cubed. So this would be the mathematical expression of the data set that I have, right? This is the equation of the linearized line from the data set. So we would use the term a lot mathematical expression, but this is what actually describes the data set. So if I just were to look at this, right? If I were to just glance at this mathematical model, I instantly know that pressure and volume are inversely proportional to one another based on this. And I can know how inversely proportional they are by that slope value. This is some of the power that's in linearization by being able to just look at a mathematical model and know what the graph shapes are, or to be able to look at graphs and know what the mathematical models will be as well. The power in this truthfully is that we don't have to guess as you do in curve fit, we can know. And being confident in physics really makes our answers better. If you say things like, well, I think it might be, maybe, that's not a great answer. But if you can say, I know, 
that this relationship is inverse that gives you a lot of power and makes your answers in your writing a heck of a lot better. Linearization is a crazy important topic. Thank you so much for joining us. That's all for today with Physical Lens. Until next time, see you later.